Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sudeep Charles, and I head product marketing for Chef Desktop. Um, with me today is Chaitra, who leads the product management function for this product, um, as also Rishi Chavda uh, from our engineering team. We'll talk about you know, how DevOps has helped organizations achieve uh, you know, success in terms of time and effort, save collaboration, uh, you know, faster releases by successfully managing endpoints um, over the next hour, right? So uh, with that said, um, let's get right to it. Well, the significance of highly reliable, highly networked, uh, and yet relatively inexpensive infrastructure is highlighted typically by uh, the agile uh, infrastructure trend, right? Many of the features uh, such as collaboration, diversified skill sets, um, you know, to generate resilience, quick iteration, um, and self-improvement work processes are also enhanced. Um, but DevOps as a promise extends beyond uh, just IT admins and operations staffs, jobs being made easier. Right? Uh, and by combining both teams into one entity, communication between them uh, has improved much. Uh, along with the processes that you know intrinsically required both teams to work together. Uh, but for most of these businesses, the most important uh, collaborative operation uh, that requires you know involvement from both sides uh, is actually fleet management. Um, this is why, right? So in recent years, we've witnessed the introduction of a new class of automation solutions aimed at making uh, device endpoint administration considerably easier. Right. Despite the fact that you know, DevOps and DevSecOps were created largely um, as management tools, uh, they have a very philosophical impact, if you will, uh, on how software businesses handle fleet security. Uh, and because of uh, DevOps errors, quick release schedules, you know, many IT administrators now perceive their responsibility as you know, providing resilience to their fleet of devices rather than just protection. And instead of assuming that every uh, you know, security vulnerability can be addressed, uh, many DevSecOps teams now assume um, that every device will be susceptible and focus on protecting other devices from you know, these repercussions. But managing endpoints uh, is not without its challenges, right? And I'll, I'll uh, you know, let you skim through the slide, but uh, ineffective communication between teams is often cited uh, as a top collaboration channels uh, challenge by organizations. It, and at any given time, 42% uh, of endpoints um, are unsecured on an average, right? And according to um, Gartner, 68% uh, of enterprise endpoints uh, out of 5.8 billion are affected. Uh, that's a large percentage of a large number, right? 69% um, of employee-owned devices are usually vulnerable to cyber attacks, and this is according to a SAN survey, right? So uh, effectively, the challenges are many. The numbers are not small. Um, but how do you actually try and deal with this challenge? Well, using DevOps principles, um, and you could use DevOps principles to manage endpoints. How do you do that? Multiple ways, right? So frequent updates and, and Chef, for example, ensures that every small incremental change is quickly and consistently uh, applied across endpoints. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, DevOps teams try to deliver quick application updates you know, rather than working in the traditional waterfall approach. Uh, this is because, you know, device configurations are constantly changing uh, and updates, of course, are very frequent. So uh, it's not a good idea to introduce, you know, a new sub fleet of devices or a new set of modifications. The best thing is to accept, you know, updates in small chunks, uh, but on a frequent basis. Uh, the second is, of course, policy configuration and, you know, infrastructure as code tools such as Chef uh, typically automate uh, the configuration management of hundreds of machines. Uh, so infrastructure automation being built uh, on centralized regulations also help regulate how devices are configured and which software runs on them as well. Right? Um, Chef, of course, enhances this capacity by you know, allowing users to define and apply settings to a large number and large fleets of heterogeneous uh, endpoints. Then, of course, there's automation itself, right? Servers are frequently referred to, you know, as cattle, and most DevOps practitioners on this call uh, can relate to this, uh, typically to emphasize the fact that they, you know, the, the, each of these fleet um, systems can be replaced uh, if one of the herds members, you know, fails. And endpoint management works on the same principle. Uh, you know, rather than stressing over, you know, minor flaws in, you know, individual devices, 
replacement of course is a better option especially if you can uh, automate device configuration and in, in a deployment rather than just try and update each device individually um, especially if something has to be changed um, and of course uh, the principle is platform agnostic and, and much like what chef is right endpoint management systems um, such as chef um, are again platform agnostic so irrespective of the os that you're running uh, you could still manage to upgrade manage uh, all of these devices at scale uh, and also look um, at the status of all of these devices on a single pane of glass well uh, what do you get out of this? And, and I think the advantages are fairly obvious, right? It increases productivity because your manual intervention comes down exponentially. Uh, there's, of course, broader OS coverage. Uh, you don't have to deal with multiple single point solutions and then try and integrate them, each of these single point solutions dealing with different operating systems, right? So Chef being able to do um, all operating systems and then provide you with a single dashboard. Uh, more flexibility and fine grain control. So you'll be able to see, uh, you know, each the state of each of these nodes, if you will, um, in real time, and be able to kind of you know get absolute fine grained control uh, into their configurations. Of course, uh, automation and automating your entire fleet saves time, right? Uh, it decreases the manual intervention, increases overall productivity. So uh, that's uh, in just in terms of what you gain from this approach. Uh, and Chaitra will cover a lot more of what you can do uh, with Chef Desktop in much more detail. Uh, but before that, uh, you'll see a few poll questions that pop up. Uh, do take the time to respond to these poll questions, and we'll discuss the results of these questions uh, towards the end uh, of the webinar. But with that, um, I'll hand it off to Chaitra to take us through a deeper dive. Over to you. Thanks, Sufi. So let's talk about the DevOps movement, right? So developer and operation teams were often, you know, they were working in silos and that created a gap and uh, often they, their end goals, what they were looking for were different. And this created a delay in releases and teams found it hard to ensure stable releases. But with the advent of DevOps, collaboration uh, between the teams uh, improved and shortened development cycles. This was possible as teams started using DevOps automation tools, which enabled them to adopt SDLC processes and represent infrastructure as code. So all changes were peer reviewable, integrated with CI/CD pipelines, and hence they were uh, well vetted and tested for every incremental change made. The result of adopting DevOps was that a highly dynamic and growing infrastructure could be managed with more ease and control. Similarly, uh, there are challenges with managing endpoints if you go about it in the traditional manner. Managing endpoints at scale, right? So as organizations grow, the endpoint fleet size increases, which is similar to problems that arise with managing a growing cloud infrastructure. IT teams responsible for managing endpoints also tend to work in silos. Often, you know, there could be separate teams for managing endpoint policies, uh, desktop support, and also uh, compliance teams, right? And these teams uh, use different tools and have different end goals. And then there is also a lack of visibility into the status of the fleet to identify whether or not the configurations have been applied correctly, whether the fleet is compliant to you know, organizational standards. And uh, finally, there is also the overhead of managing uh, multiple devices belonging to you know, different operating systems uh, and making custom configurations for different teams, which is also quite similar to managing multiple applications of different versions and different deployments. It becomes necessary to provide smooth end user, end user experience in spite of changing configurations, uh, geographically distributed teams, uh, remote work and limited access to VPN. The challenge faced with managing endpoints has parallels with the difficulties that were present for the dev and ops teams. And hence, uh, applying DevOps principles to manage endpoints would help break the silos and enable management of endpoints at scale, giving uh, teams more control and fine grained visibility into the fleet. So extending DevOps principles to uh, managing endpoints provides the benefit of peer reviewable code. Uh, that is, every configuration changes you make are peer reviewed, well vetted and tested before they are deployed to production. 
and uh, writing configurations or compliance checks as code means there is a common language across teams right so uh, with code you get flexibility and lesser number of repeatable manual tasks uh, and mistakes that come uh, with uh, you know uh, gui based manual tasks uh, with peer reviewable code uh, and ci cd pipeline you also have a continuous feedback loop for every new change that you roll out also devops principles uh, you, you know uh, can consider security and compliance reviews early in the cycle which helps in ensuring security and also avoid delays in rolling out releases so to apply devops principles for endpoint management you can use configuration management tools like chef so chef has proven itself in the devops space for managing server and cloud infrastructure right so let's talk about how chef can be used for automating your endpoint uh, endpoint management and configurations so typically this is what the chef setup looks like uh, uh when it comes to managing uh, endpoints so core tasks like zero touch enrollment remote wipe or lock etc are performed with endpoint management tools and these tools are used for deploying the chef client onto the endpoints and uh, chef is used for specifying configurations as code and compliance checks as code uh, chef can automatically remediate non compliant machines via code so once you have the endpoint management tools install chef client on the endpoints from then on chef takes over and chef client ensures that all configurations that are specified are applied correctly and ensures that devices are in the desired state and you can also achieve continuous compliance with a single chain a tool chain and process so talking a little bit more about how a chef desktop setup looks like for managing endpoints so uh, all the con code configurations uh, are or compliance checks are specified in the form of chef artifacts called cookbooks which has recipes defining different configurations so these cookbooks are pushed to the source code management repository like github uh, which triggers a ci cd pipeline and the cookbook is tested and pushed to the chef server the chef client deployed on the machines uh, pull these cookbooks and apply them onto the machines every time the cookbook is updated for say you know new configurations or updates that you want to make it is tested and the latest changes are pulled by the chef client onto the devices so let's say even if there is a configuration drift done manually by some user or due to some issue uh, uh, right the drifts are automatically corrected as chef clients are, are you know they can be scheduled to run periodically and it can detect any change in configuration and it will ensure uh, uh, it will detect the configuration change and apply the original configurations again from the cookbook and ensure that the devices remain in the desired state so the state of your entire fleet the compliance test results and all the changes done on your fleet can be viewed on a vis visibility dashboard of chef called automate you can use chef to manage uh, devices with different operating systems as well like windows mac os and linux so the benefits with using chef for endpoint management is that you get audit trail right so since chef allows you to follow an sdlc process all configurations are version version control every configuration change made is audited so you know who made a change and when it was made and then configurations can be customized as per team or user specific needs and chef uh, provides uh, code abstractions uh, called resources and they abstract out all the underlying tasks that need to be done to perform a specific configuration so all the user needs to do is pass the required parameters and chef will figure out how to do it which makes it easier to specify configurations as code and then you can uh, also achieve continuous compliance by writing compliance tests and uh, deploying remediation cookbooks to fix non compliant machines and also since chef client is scheduled to run at regular intervals drifts are corrected every time a chef client is run so uh, before we move to the next question uh, next section you'll see a poll question pop up uh, i would request you to respond to this poll so that we can discuss the results at the end of the webinar so having said that i hand over to my colleague rishi who will now walk you through a short, short demo of how you can use chef to uh, you know uh, apply uh, configurations on your endpoints Etc. 
So before I start, I just want to let uh, want you to know that this is a, a pre-recorded demo to respect everybody's time. So we're just going to uh, walk you through how the whole uh, SDLC process looks like uh, on updating the configurations and automating the pipeline and seeing the results on your uh, nodes. So you might have seen this uh, repo before in our webinars. We have cookbooks, pulse files, and all of that. We have a custom cookbook. Uh, then there's desktop config, our premium content, and then there's some remediation cookbooks for Apple, Ubuntu, and the likes. So th these recipes that you look at right now are by default provided by our premium content. So there's password policy, auto logout, firewall, uh, screensaver, risk account, and app management setup with monkey for macOS. And then for Windows, we have uh, the same kind of stuff just for the Windows. Uh, so you have this encryption, password policy, firewall, auto log, uh, auto logout, and we have a chocolate installer and then Gorilla setup uh, for Windows. So just the basic stuff. And then we have the policy file setup that you have might uh, might have seen before. So we have a base policy, which has the sub config and our custom cookbook. And then we inherit it on uh, base Windows, OS X and Linux profiles. And then out of those um, base profiles, we create profiles for other teams. So for let's say there's a backend team or uh, an engineering team as a whole or a front end team. So you might have additional configurations for them. And then we have the inspect profile. So for this demo, we have added a bunch of profiles here um, for a bunch of different uh, recipes. So as you can see, there's one for desktop screen saver as well for uh, disk encryption. And then we have a bunch of profiles from uh, the previous demos. So uh, just to give you an example of how custom profiles might look, and they're, they're simple. So that's that's pretty much the uh, repo structure that we have got here. And then we have the premium content uh, that we get from Chef. So for Ubuntu, Windows, and uh, the other operating systems. So and for this demo, obviously we are going uh, we are going to uh, show you how looks like in a pipeline. So we have set it up on build kite. So this is a very simple build kite configuration and we have set it up so it uh, pushes the profile objects when it's on main branch. And you can see on our dashboard that the pipeline has been pushing to our dashboard. And there's a bunch of nodes uh, for Mac OS. As we update the configurations, it has been um, updating the profiles and then the nodes get the latest configuration. <clears throat> and similarly for all the other nodes, so Windows node as well. So it's, it looks fairly simple. And let's see how, uh, if you make a change, uh, how it works. So for the desktop screensaver, we'll just change the idle time to uh, 10 minutes from 20 minutes that was set earlier. And since we have changed it, we'll also need to change the uh, compliance uh, control. So we'll go to our inspect profile and change the 1200 seconds to 600 seconds. So that's 10 minutes. So now that we have taken care of the configuration and the compliance, we'll go back to our tests because obviously we are going to test our uh, configuration before we push it to our servers. So here we'll change all the 1200s to 600. So that's for uh, 10 minutes. And make sure that the test pass so the pipeline knows when to push the configuration to server. So with all the changes in place, uh, just a couple of line of code, uh, we'll go and update that to get. So just the general stuff, git add, git commit, update screen saver idle time for Windows systems. And then we'll push it to the branch that we're changing to. So reduce screen saver time uh, is our branch. And then just uh, we'll just make a PR to a repo on GitHub. 
So we'll just add a very uh, basic description. So our teammates know what are the changes that are being done on the uh, PR. So reduce the idle time for Windows systems from 10 to uh, 10, uh, 20 to 10 minutes. And then we just create a pull request. So when, once that is uh, created, you can see the uh, pipeline has been triggered and that is going to run a bunch of tests that we have in our uh, cookbooks. So if you look at it, there's a unit test uh, by, uh, running with the chef spec. And then we have a bunch of integration tests for Mac and Windows because we have those nodes. So once the tests are passing, we can take a look at it and see all the tests are running fine. So we know it's time that we can get reviewed, uh, you know, get it reviewed from our teammate. So we can go back to the uh, pull request. The tests are passing. So we now assign a reviewer to it. So I'll just go ahead, add a tape number to it. So in case I'll add one of my team members and then wait for the review. So once they see the notification on GitHub and uh, they'll come back. So this is uh, my colleagues uh, screen. So they'll come back, uh, they'll look at the code that's changed and they'll be okay, that sounds good. So I'll just, you know, go ahead and approve this, uh, merge this to the main branch where our stable configuration uh, is there. So the tests are passing, the changes look good, and you know all the um, context behind it is already there. So it's on the PR description, everything is tested, and we have all the details that uh, we might need for future reference, right? So once that is done, I can see, okay, my colleague came up and he looked at it, reviewed it, and then uh, emerged it. So I can see uh, on the main branch, if I look at the pipeline, all the other tests are running again, just to make sure that uh, everything is working. But then there's another step uh, that would upload policies and profiles to server, right? And uh, it's not doing much, it's still the same thing that you would manually do so it's going to upload all the policies to the server and then upload all the inspect profiles like the custom profile that we have the uh, premium content that we have from chef and we are going to push it to our servers right and uh, the next time a node runs it would have all the updated configuration so here we are going to just run chef client manually so that we can see uh, what it's doing. So now Jeff Client is going to get the latest policy version from our uh, servers. So here it's going to take it from the backend team. Uh, that's the policy assigned to this Windows node. So we'll just let it run. And you can see uh, it is going to change what it needs to change and it updates what it needs to. And here we have that it changed the screen saver timeout to 600. So yeah, that's that's as simple as it gets. We have a single place where we have all the code, all the configuration, all the compliance profiles, and all the policy files, everything is right there. We just update it and let the test run on the pipeline uh, somebody reviews it, uh, we have all the details around it, we have the context around it, and uh, it would just, it serves as a single place where you have the configuration, you have all the context behind it, who made the change, uh, when they made the change, who reviewed it, uh, and it, it sort of uh, gives you a visibility to everything that is there and uh, what changed over time. So uh, I guess with this, I'll hand it back over to Chaitra. Thanks, Rishi. Thanks for the demo.
so yeah you'll you should see another poll question pop up uh, i would request you to respond to this poll okay so let's talk about where does chef fit into desktop management right so chef desktop was launched in early 2020 and it essentially uses the same components and tools and technology that is used for managing and automating our server configuration management so like i said earlier chef has proven itself in the devops space for many years and since there are benefits with applying devops principles to endpoint management it is only logical that we extend chef to managing endpoints as well even though the Chef desktop product was officially launched early 2020. Some of our customers have been using Chef to manage their endpoints as early as 2015, and they've been able to manage tens and thousands of devices with just a small team of two or three people. And they were able to do this because they were representing their endpoint status code and were automating most of their manual processes, which helped them to manage a large fleet size at scale. With Chef Desktop, you can drive efficiency through automation of IT resources. So by uh, automating mundane manual configuration tasks, you can reduce IT setup tickets and avoid mistakes. Uh, uh, you know, you can enable faster time to productivity for employees, um, reduce downtime and uh, achieve uh, uh, quick uh, uh, updates to your uh, fleet. And then you can uh, gain control over IT resources, right? So uh, uh, you can manage uh, IT resources consistently across the enterprise. Uh, Chef can manage multiple operating systems uh, like uh, Windows, Linux, and Macs. Uh, you can basically use the same tool chain and processes for managing devices of different operating systems with Chef. Chef really increases the efficiency of the team. You don't have to write multiple scripts to achieve a configuration. You can uh, use a single cookbook to manage a large fleet with different operating systems with centralized visibility uh, independent of the operating system used. And then you can reduce security and compliance risks of uh, your IT fleet, right? So by monitoring your laptop or desktop fleet for compliance through CIS benchmarks provided by Chef uh, in the form of premium content, you can uh, achieve compliance easily. Um, any and all of your uh, changes can be audited through code, right? And you can achieve a rapid IT resource hardening or remediation, whether it is for single laptop or uh, entire fleet. With Chef, you can automate desktop management via code that can be made by pipeline deliverable like we saw in the demo earlier. Uh, and uh, manage configuration through Chef curated content. So Chef provides premium content uh, uh, cookbook which has recipes for most common endpoint management use cases. These uh, recipes are available both with Ruby and YAML templates. Uh, uh, you can manage company-wide fleet uh, regardless of the operating system like I told earlier and detect when a laptop or desktop configuration drifts and automatically correct any necessary misconfigurations. You can have uh, customized uh, extensible configuration controls to meet each organization's unique needs. Chef uh, Desktop has a visibility layer which enables uh, uh, continuous visibility into the configuration status of the fleet. So this visibility layer is called Automate and there is a dashboard dedicated for desktop. So this dashboard shows the status of all the devices irrespective of whether it is Windows, Mac or Linux. You can see uh, how many laptops or desktops checked in and how many did not. Uh, you can view the check-in history and find out the status of your devices over a period of time. You can uh, further drill down and view device-specific attributes as well, like uh, maybe client version, OS version, kernel version, uh, uh, the cookbooks that were deployed onto a node, etc. Um, you can also you know, pre-group information and uh, view the top errors. Uh, apart from this, you also have a compliance dashboard like we saw, uh, uh, like Rishi was showing earlier, right? So Chef empowers IT resource managers through compliance as well. With Chef, you can consistently enforce security and company uh, policies with Chef curated content, or you can write your own compliance prof profiles to meet customer specific compliance needs. So you can continuously detect security or compliance issues 
and uh, allow for automatic remediation with uh, the by deploying your remediation cookbooks. Finally, what does uh, Chef Desktop bring? Uh, right, so you will be able to do more with less resources. We we've seen our like customers managing thousands of devices with even a small team of one or two. Uh, with most of the process automated, there is just very few things that can go wrong. And you'll not only be able to bring the fleet to the desired state, you can continue to keep them in that state uh, by proactively monitoring the fleet and correcting non-compliant devices. So since all changes are version control, you will be able to track everything from who made the change, uh, when the change was made to uh, what are the changes that uh, you know, occurred over a period of time. So finally, you'll have a single process and tool for managing configurations and ensuring compliance of your entire fleet. So uh, we've come towards the end of the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, I would request you to post them. Uh, we can help answering them. We do, we do. And and uh, while we uh, get the questions in, um, let's uh, you know look at the uh, the uh, responses to the polls first, and and you know we can have um the questions in at the same time so uh why don't we have the response to the first question great so what are the biggest challenges in managing endpoints and um i think it's an even split between uh, ensuring all devices are configured as desired um, and drift management i think both are um yeah are, are very interesting challenges. I think the uh, a more or a more basic one is first understanding which of your systems is compliant and which is not. So which systems have within quotes drifted in the first place, but uh, Chaitra. Yeah, so security has like changed over the years, right? So it is very important that devices are not misconfigured and uh, proactive reporting and remediation becomes very important in this case right so uh, i am i'm actually uh, not surprised that these two are the most important uh, you know biggest challenges that uh, most people are facing in their uh, environment absolutely yeah. all right so let's get to the second question then You have a single team for managing servers and desktops, um, and it's almost one-sided on this one. Uh, there are two separate teams. So client side and server side, um, different teams completely. Uh, and I think that's part of the whole challenge of, of trying yeah. to make this more streamlined and efficient, right? Just trying to have a different set of processes on server side, different side of processes on the client side. But sorry, Chatra, you were saying yeah. something. Yeah, I, no, no. I totally agree with you sudeep i think it's more common that you know there are two separate teams for managing servers and desktops uh, yeah but uh, if there is a like single team which manages both servers and desktops and you're already applying devops principles to manage your endpoints it just becomes uh, uh, you know even more easier to apply devops principles to endpoint management uh, but yeah great great thanks chaitra um, and can we have the results of the third one? Please? Right. So the third question was, uh, what is a must have feature in a tool for automating endpoint management? Um, the majority said patch management. 25% um, mm. said remote monitoring, which I think is fair. Uh, and the, uh, a smaller percentage basically said uh, must have a GUI. So uh, not really uh, scripting oriented or not wanting to write scripts, but uh, what's your take? Yeah, patch so management being the best. Patch, yeah, oh. patch management is definitely one of the most important important use cases for any IT admin. So yeah, and same similarly with remote monitoring as well. Uh, uh, but yeah, patch management definitely takes a, a higher uh, score there. Uh, so coming to GUI, yeah, you know, while GUI has its benefits, like, uh, you know, uh, it's easy for a new person to just start using it if it's a GUI oriented tool, but then there are certain risks that come with, the, with it. Uh, there could be like, you know, sometimes human errors leading to unintended consequences. And 
it does not uh, scale very well when your fleet grows. Uh, but if you have your policies defined as code, you have much more flexibility and control over your fleet. Great, great. Um, I see a question from Dennis. Uh, maybe you could add more context on you know when you're seeing this. What is it that you're trying to do when you when you see all of this, right? So um, and and we'll be able to answer that better. Uh, but I, I'll continue to, uh, you know, move into uh, the other questions that we've got. Um, so Chaitra, uh, the second question that we got today is, um, is the format to specify configurations via Chef the same for different operating systems? Yes, so it is the same, right? So, so while there may be different parameters that you need to set for different operating systems, the format used to specify chef recipes are the same. Uh, so chef provides uh, code abstractions in the form of resources. Uh, and uh, basically you need to use the similar pattern for all the operating systems. So yeah, the skill set required is also the same, yeah. Great. Um, and also, you, irrespective of the uh, operating system you're using, you still get visibility on a single pane of glass, right? right I think right. that's one of the things that um, that Chef is able to do, uh, as opposed to most other solutions. Right. All right. Uh, great. So the next one is on remediation. So how can we remediate non-compliant devices with Chef? So you can uh, deploy remediation cookbooks for that. And uh, since Chef Client is scheduled to run at a specified time interval, um, anytime there is a configuration drift between two Chef Client runs, uh, the next run will, ens will ensure that the drift is corrected. So yeah, that's how you can do it. Right, and do you also wanna uh, speak a little bit about uh, the content as well that, uh, yeah. you know, so right. Correct. So for Sorry, uh, like on. like I said before, how Chef provides Chef curated, uh, you know, uh, CIS benchmark con content for you know auditing as well as remediation. So uh, you can also just use the out of the box uh, remediation content that Chef provides to remediate your non-compliant devices. Got it. Got it. Uh, I think Kumar had a question. Uh, Please go ahead and share it with us on uh, the Q and A section, uh, Dennis. I think we'll probably need to sync up with you. Uh, you know, post this call uh, separately. We want to understand a little bit more in terms of the context, um, or if you if you know might need to raise uh, you know an issue with the automate repo on on GitHub. Uh, that's something that we might end up doing, but we just want to make sure that we understand. Uh, what your specific, um, you know, use cases and and at least try and understand if this is an issue, but we'll definitely reach out to you uh, once this is done. Great. Uh, I am just giving it some more time because I know that we're getting questions. I think we're, uh, but we're not seeing them. So, uh, Raisa, maybe can you help Kumar try and direct his question to us? Uh, so, Sudeep, uh, Kumar had just raised a hand, but since we cannot allow guests to talk during the webinar, we will just right. see if he has any questions. Uh, otherwise, sure. uh, maybe we can reach out to him um, separately after this uh, webinar. Absolutely. All right, great. Um, that's pretty much all I had, uh, but I want to, one, uh, let the, the attendees of this webinar know that in case you have questions, feel free to reach out to us um, and we'll be more than happy to try and solve those problems that you have. Uh, two, if you have questions that are not, you know, that are related more to the topics that we presented today, happy to answer them as well. And finally, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and on behalf of Chaitra and Rishi, I'd like to thank you for the time that you've uh, dedicated to this webinar. So thank you so much. Uh, with that, I'll hand it back to Raisa. Thank you, Sudeep. Thanks, Chaitra and Rishi. Uh, this was a great webinar. And I believe Dennis still have a few questions, uh, but we can probably just reach out to him after this webinar uh, to answer those questions, right? Uh, yes. So before, before I do that, Dennis, maybe you could uh, 
drop your email id or if there is any other identifier chaitra i think you were going to yeah. say something but uh, that will be so quicker and easier to do as well i think the first issue uh, that dennis spoke about uh, might be a uh, you know uh, probably which requires support i guess maybe a support ticket can be raised on that and uh, yeah we can talk about the other questions that you have i can connect you with the right uh, you know support professional or uh, uh, engineer who can uh, answer your questions yeah but but dennis please uh, yeah. do drop in your your yeah. email id because it will be easier for us to reach out to you right thanks to the penchetra so dennis has already dropped an email id so i'll share it with you guys after the webinar cool. yeah great Great. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, I hope this webinar was very informative to everybody who attended it today. Um, if you guys have uh, any questions, please reach out to our team directly. Um, and um, we will have, as always, this webinar is being recorded, so we will share the recording soon with you. Uh, you should be able to access it using the same link that you're using right now. So with that, uh, thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye.